What is up guys? Alpine Gremlin here with some Armored Warfare gameplay. Um, it's been a very long time since I've put up a video and I think that yes guys I am still alive and I am really excited for this game. Um, and so what we need to rem what we need to remember when we're watching this video is that it is a beta. Everything. I mean, it's an alpha actually. It's uh, it's the early access, uh, the early access alpha test. This is the first round. Um, for those of you that either got selected or bought founders packs to get in, this is this uh, runs from uh, the 25th of May to June 3rd. And right now it is Friday, May 29th, that I am recording this. Uh, the EU ser the, I'm on the EU server right now. It just went up. And basically, if I were to describe the current iteration of the test, it's so much like World of Tanks that, you know, basically, as of right now, every skill that you picked up in Watt is going to transfer over pretty well to the game in its current form. And I need to, and I need to keep reiterating that, in its current form. I don't know how this game is going to look when the next round of testing takes place, I don't know how this game is going to look, you know, and how it's going to play in, you know, in the next round of testing or when it goes into closed beta, when it goes into open beta. It's because we're still in alpha. So this, this game still has a lot of development ahead of it. And so I really can only talk about in terms of the current version and how it is right now. So, what is it? Well, this is our garage. As you can see, it looks very similar to Watt. Um, as of right now, you've got two dealers. Now, these, are, these replace your standard tech trees because what happens is that American, Soviet, French vehicles like that, they don't have their own trees. You have to, what you do is you go to the dealers, and these dealers specialize in different vehicles. You've got Wolfi, I think that's how you, I don't know how you pronounce that. And uh, Shiskin, which are the two different dealers, and they have access to different vehicles. So you can see that um, Sophie, who's I'm just gonna say her first name, Sophie, she special she her dealer seems to specialize in German, and a lot of she seems to specialize in mostly German and American vehicles. She does have BMPs as arm for armored fighting vehicles and and IFVs. For recon vehicles, she's got um, a couple American esque vehicles and a lot of, you know, the Wiesel German. She has a couple uh, SPGs here, a couple wheeled tank destroyers, and um, she has her standard armored vehicles, which are the M113, the LAV 150, the M60 Patton, all the way up to the Leopard 2 AV which is at tier 6. Now that's another thing, there's only 6 tiers in the current iteration of the test, but I, but obviously more will be added later. You can see the 7 down there is empty, so that's going to lead me to believe that we do in fact, well it goes up to 8. I don't know, again, I don't know if that's going to change, if they're going to put it up to 10 like Watt, but as of right now there's only 6 tiers of vehicle. So you can see that um, the American friend and the American German and a lot of the and you know and a lot of the uh, and some Soviet vehicles are in the same tech tree. Then if we go to the other dealer, you can see that uh, they generally focus on more heavier firepower, whereas the other dealer focused more on um, precision. You can see um, you know there's a lot of T62. There's a lot of Soviet main battle tanks here. There's a Chieftain Mark V, so British in the same tech tree as Soviet. A, lot, a couple French vehicles, the AMX 10P, some self propelled artillery, um, the Sheridan. So, you can see that there's a, there is a lot of different. Um, there's a lot of variation in vehicle class. Now, in, in my current. In my current um, grind right now, I'm on the Patton because I'm going for the Leopard line. I want the Leopard 2 at the end of that line. And so what I'm doing is, is I'm grinding up the M the M60 Patton. Um, I really haven't upgraded much. I don't. Ha I only have the rangefinder, and I think right now, and I have the gunners, and I'm going going for the gunners periscope. 
Um, you can see there's many different shell types, unlike in Watt, where you really only have APCR, heat, high explosive, um, or armor piercing. You have different variations of the armor piercing shell, like you got a fin stabilized ammo here, another fin stabilized, you have your standard heat, obviously, stuff like that. Now, there's a lot of things that are blanked out as of right now. You got PVE missions, which are going, which are going to become available, and you've got your main base. I'm not quite sure what that is yet. Dossier, which is your personal statistics, and then the battalion is kind of like a clan, basically. So, if you've played Watt, you've played a lot of Watt like I have, this is going to be a very familiar interface to you, and basically. It's 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 basic yeah it's basically Watt with modern main battle tanks now if I had to if I had to ch if I had to say how you know one thing that's definitely different from is that the controls are a little bit more realistic than in Watt I've noticed in this current version of the test the vehicles do still feel like they're driving tanks doesn't feel like the tanks are kind of you know z zipping around on on lines like they are in Watt you know in Watt the tanks are very light. They don't really feel like there's any weight behind them, but they do feel like that here in Armored Warfare. It's kind of like, if I honestly, it's kind of like War Thunder. Not not completely like War Thunder, but more like War Thunder tank controls, mixed with the arcadey feel of Watt, which I actually kind of like. Um, you can see that the commander and crew they function very similar to how they do in how they are in uh, Watt, except it seems like each different commander, like Victor here, he has a, it, you don't just go up to 100% training, it seems like they only really specialize in certain skills, and they're really, and they automatically go to certain skills, and then as you gain more experience, you're able to train more skills, and you can see these are all of the different skills that this commander has. Um, crew works, seems to work the same way. Now, I'm not entirely sure how it functions yet. All I can see is that the crew, basically, there's no 100%, you know, training bar that they go in their core skill first. Um, but they do automatically go straight to their perks. And it seems like different commanders offer different perks. So, you can, because you see if we go to the LAB 150, Sabrina has different commander perks than Victor does. And then that even more so with um, Philip here. He has different he has different skills as well. So anyway, and then in terms of, you know, there's here's your ammo load out here. You can see I've loaded AP uh, the fin stabilized ammo and I have consumables, fire extinguisher, repair kit and first aid kit. Literally exactly how it is in Watt. Um, and then you can see up here what's interesting it's called the proven mechanic in Watt and in War Thunder you can basically take gold convert it into XP and then completely research through to the next vehicle because you can see this is my progress toward this up here is my progress towards the Leopard 1 and you can see that each vehicle in the line has different prerequisites. So in Watt, when you're grinding down a line, you have to earn a certain amount of experience in the previous vehicle in order to get this, ve in order to get a certain vehicle. But there are different types. There are different types of uh, of how you say ways to grind. Now, if I'm going straight down this line, it's a lot like World of Tanks. The Leopard one, you could see down at the bottom, the vehicle prerequisite. I need to earn 7,500 um, reputation points, which is basically research XP. Out of I have to earn 7,500 of that RP in the M60 in order to get to the next, in order to unlock the Leopard, and then be able to purchase it. However, you could see down here this BMP I got by doing I got due to a certain other prerequisite. Instead of getting you know a certain amount of RP in the previous vehicle. I instead just had to do a certain amount of damage to top tier vehicles in the match. Um, the swing fire, the recon vehicles, you could see I have to spot um, in in one of you know in one of these wolfy vehicles. I have to spot 
um, 60 enemy vehicles in order to get this vehicle. To th I need to um, just play a certain amount of battles to unlock this SPG. And so there's more than one way to grind through, you know, each of the different tanks. And what happens is, is so this this is in re this is in regards to the RP I need to get to the Leopard One. You could see right here, proven. I have to get at least 50% of this vehicle researched. I have to I have to earn at least 50% of the RP needed to get to the Leopard before I can take a premium, my premium status and free XP basically the, the rest of the way. And I like this mechanic because it makes you actually have to play the vehicle. You have to gain some amount of experience in the vehicle's predecessor and in the vehicle before you can move on. And I like this because it actually makes you play the tanks. You gain experience. And, you know, whereas, you know, in Watt, instead of, you know, running into tier 10s that have only played a couple thousand battles because they free our XP'd their way up the line and now are completely clueless to how to play it. And so I like this because it actually makes you, uh, you know, gain some kind of experience in the vehicle. As of right now, there's uh, three different currencies. You've got your free, basically, RP, which is exactly like it is in Watt. You can put it on any vehicle. You've got your credits, and, or money, looks like in this, and gold. So that's the basic garage. Um, I think we should actually, I think it's about time we actually went into battle. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and then we'll rejoin when we find the game, which won't take long because these servers are really busy. Okay, so here we are in the, uh, in the Leopard 1, it's Tier 4, uh, main battle tank, in the Wolfi Tech Tree for the dealers. So I guess this is kind of, I kind of take the time while I'm playing this to kind of give me some of my first impressions of the game. Um, for one, I'm, I'm really glad that they've decided to go with these four maps. They're very varied, and they do provide a lot of uh, a lot of different environments to fight in. This is one map that I haven't really completely Driver figured out yet. It seems Go like there are really there really are no uh, infallible Driver, positions on this map. It seems like every position on this map. Um, you know, if you're not going in the city, which I generally, as you, if you guys remember from any of the things I did in Watt, especially with vehicles like the Leo, I really like to stay away from cities. But what I notice is that, uh, a lot of, the, most of the positions on the outskirts of town really, uh, get counter get countered easily from any other position on the map. That hill up there is a popular position, but anybody can really put fire on it from most positions on the map. So I generally kind of just, I like to kind of just, uh, kind of work the outskirts of the city on, uh, I think it's called Cold Strike. Um, this Leo isn't, isn't really, uh, isn't fully upgraded. I've actually only really put a couple things on. I have the smoke launchers, which I haven't even tested out yet, actually. I don't really have any of the upgrades for it, but I still, I do like it. It definitely plays a lot like the Leopard in uh, World of Tanks. So, generally, you know, you want to conserve your health for when you really need it. Do as much damage as you can. That was a hit on that. Let's hit that BMD now. He's up there on the hill. I'm not sure if I can put fire on him, though. And, so yeah, it, play, it seems to play a lot like, oh, that's an ATGM. So, apparently, I was spotted. That was the uh, ATGM warning that just came up. So remember, all this is live, so if my commentary is a little bit disjointed, it's because there's just, you know, a lot of things that uh, focusing on at once now. Um, so yeah, I like to kind of play the outskirts of the city because it does kind of seem to provide the best amount of, I guess, uh, angles of fire on targets. A T62 over there creeping up the side of the hill. I might go see what he's up to. But like I said, I don't like to stray too far into the city. Now another thing I noticed about this this current build, and because remember, you know, um, there's obviously going to be a lot of things that are going to change. What I notice is that um, there isn't a lot of the guns, the guns can be very inaccurate, I notice, um, when you when they're not fully aimed. And I feel like 
it, you know, I feel like it, it really shouldn't be that grossly exaggerated, but the dispersion when you're not, when you haven't fired a fully aimed shot, it does seem to be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit exaggerated. Especially because, you know, considering the guns we're using, I mean, these are modern main battle tank guns, you would think they would be, you know, modeled to be a little bit more accurate than that. Now, of course, when you do fully aim, uh, you know, they generally go where you're firing. And I'm just going to wait see if I can ambush this T-62 as he comes around the corner. He doesn't seem interested. No, we're just going to go around the other side of the house and get him then. He's down. To say that, you know, uh, to be honest, if, to say that my uh, World of Tanks skills are rusty would be an understatement. I'm still, um, you know, especially because, you know, not only are we not playing Watt, you know, I haven't played Watt in about eight months, and now we're in a com basically in a completely new environment, so I'm still discovering a lot of the positions on these maps. Now, I know that I said I was going to stay away from the city, but it seems like that's where a lot of the action is happening. And on Cold Strike, I hate to say it, but a lot of the action does happen in the city. This guy just fired, so we're going to put a shot on the lower front plate, finish him off. That M60 just fired, but I don't really want to fire, I don't really want to follow him down there yet. The T64. M60, BMP1s. I'm not going to, like I said, don't want to go too far into the city. There also seems to be uh, a couple of tanks on the zero one line, so we're going to have to keep an eye on our map for that. Should we, let's engage this Patton. Oh, there's another Patton over there, too. I don't want him to get him. You know, he's going, yep, he's going to kill the T62. Finish that Patton off. Nice. All right. Up. Let's see what. Let's see if this Patton is paying attention to us. Doesn't look like he is. A lot of their stuff seemed to also be concentrated on the zero one line. So hopefully, I'm not going to get spotted when I cross. I'm going to move up to this next building here to put to make sure I'm covered. Oh, we have his. We have his rear. Awesome. We hit him. I'm getting an ATGM lock on warning, so I gotta move. The ATGM hit us, so we need to get off this street before uh, we get reacquired. That is another thing. I do like the fact that the you know the ATGM that did a decent amount of damage to me. That's definitely the it's either the BMD or the swing fire on the enemy team because there are a lot of other tier fours in this game besides us. Not sure what it is yet. Um, but it's definitely one of them. That BMD was on low HP, as I remember, so I would like to get him out of there. Oh, do we have shots on the side of this Patton? We do, but they're only only the side of his turret. I really want to see if we can get a better shot on him, and he disappears. We'll take the blind shot. T-64, let's finish him out so we can secure our flank. Well, they're gonna get on our cap. It was probably that was definitely the swing fire that was uh, engaging us. I would like to help our T sixty four friend out over there, but um, let's see, no shot over here, no shot on these guys. What about over here? Do we have shots on this leopard or this Patton? We might have shots on the Patton. Hit. See if I can keep sniping that hatch of his. No. Alright. Alright. Shots on him. Our T-62 is getting shot at. We have to be careful. Now... Uh, the cap isn't as pertinent in this variant because um, 
it does take a little bit, so we do have some time to kind of work our work the enemy team over. I would like to finish off this BMD. We got him. There's one source of ATGMs out of the fight. We're going to get back down the hill. Looks like that T-64 was engaged successfully, so he's out of the fight as well. I'm going to move over around here because I would like to route that, that swing fire out. We got a friendly swing fire over here. Let's see, do we have shots on the T-64 over here? Never mind, we got lit. Let's back down off the hill before we take some more damage. Swing fire is right there. There's another M60 around as well. I think that's where it bounced me. Yep, that's artillery. Let's get out of here. Ouch. All right, let's try and lose this spot. We don't want to have a, a slugfest with the M60 out there. So we, do, we have managed to conserve a lot of our HP, though. So, luckily, we were able to take these hits to be more aggressive. I would like that. I'm going to try and get another, a better firing solution on the Patton. Threat to the, uh, our team was able to uh, handle the threat to the enemy cap. So, I mean, the threat to our cap. So, let's keep moving on. I'm going to see if I can get a better angle on this Patton over here. We should be covered from the uh, M109 artillery if we snuggle up next to this hill. So let's see if we can move up a little bit. There's the patent. We have shots on his flank. Yes, side of his turret. We'll take that. And he's going to get melted by our team now. Can I get the killing shot? I don't think so. Alright. And looks like the Sheridan has found the enemy artillery. So that should be over rather quickly. And that's a victory. Nice. All right, so here we are back in the garage. Uh, 2300 damage, not really, I mean, like I said, you know, I'm not really sure what's quote-unquote good or not. I mean, that's definitely a solid, I think, a solid number, especially considering, uh, you know, the gun doesn't do as much damage. Um, we did assist four kills, and, uh, oh, we actually did get, we did get four kills. My bad. I didn't even notice, and then we earned a decent amount of RP. So anyway, what are my thoughts so far? Um, well, I mean, I'm really, I'm really happy with how this game is looking. There are some things like I, like you know, it is only alpha. Um, there's a lot of things to consider, um, and like I said, I really don't want to make too many comments on things because you know, once this test is over in a couple days, um, you know, everything's gonna get wiped and they're gonna make more adjustments to everything. So. Basically, let's let's take a look at you know like the upgrades. What do I think about the leopard? I really like the leopard. I wasn't a huge fan of the patent that came before it. Um, it just seemed like it was really slow. The I, I felt like the gun was really really inaccurate. Um, even when you aimed it, it really wouldn't go where you wanted it to. It was just it was one of those guns that was just unreliable. You know, we, there and there are definitely guns like that in World of Tanks. Uh, the Leopard is a definite improvement over it. It doesn't obviously doesn't have nearly as much armor, but the gun is much more reliable and it's much more mobile um, in this current iteration. And that's what it was, so I hope it stays somewhat like this. And remember, this is a mostly stock Leopard. Uh, in Watt, it was an N-tier vehicle, so it had no upgrades. But here, you know, you can get better engines. Um, you, can get a, you can actually get a 10-cylinder uh, multi-fuel engine. You can get different rage finding equipment, which helps with your accuracy and the different type and the different ammo loadouts. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna have to check out this heat round too. Uh, 262 millimeters of pen with uh, 330, 333 average damage. That's nice. So yeah, I mean that was you know I'm really impressed with the way that this game is so far, and um, I'm just. I'm happy to, uh, you know, be able to, because I've been I've been dying to play a game like uh, Watt for a while. I really just kind of lost my interest in in Watt, and 
So I feel like this game is going to be a, uh, you know, is a pretty decent replacement, and I'm glad to mix it up with some modern armor. So anyway, I guess let's take a look at a, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll give you guys another game. I'm not, just, just for, just because I love you guys. So we'll be back when we're in battle. You know, there is one, there is one downside to the, this current version of the test. They don't have replay functionality yet. And of course, you know, the game that I'm not recording is the game that I have 5,000, that I do 5,000 damage in. And I think that would have been a really fun one for you guys to watch. But anyway, we're here on Ghost Field. Now, I really like this map for the Leopard. Um, there is a lot of open ground you can see there on the, uh, you know, on the, on the 5 and 4 line. There's some long sight lines that let you shoot across that airfield. And that is definitely where the Leopard likes to be. At long range. And, you know, not being spotted. Now the thing you need to remember is, because we're at such low tier, the view ranges aren't as, you know, the view ranges really aren't as uh, inflated as they are in World of Tanks. Obviously, like, the Leopard's got amazing view range in World of Tanks. But it really, it obviously, for balancing issues, has to be a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it's much less here in Armored Warfare. Because it's such a, you know, it's a much lower tier vehicle. Alright, we have first targets. Those T-62s are being very aggressive over there, so we'll put some we'll put some shots into them. Looks like they've taken cover behind those uh, those hangars over there. Let's see if we can keep moving up. Is he coming out? There he is. Pop him. Nice. Decent damage roll, 303. Yeah, if you, if you notice, you know, the average damage is definitely uh, a lot less than it is in uh, in World of Tanks, because obviously, you know, lower tier vehicle. Put a nice, solid hit in the side of that T-62. We're going to keep engaging. Now, this is interesting, because I, I haven't actually seen uh, anyone do this. I mean, granted, they are now... Oh, BMD is going to pop him. Now, granted... I and mean, that BMD just suicided. Waste of a tier 4, but oh well. But yeah, I've never seen them really... I've never really seen teams go behind that hangar now. That's kind of be a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, they're effectively shut down. But now, they can spot, basically, anyone that's trying to cross that runway. And that's going to be... That's going to make life difficult for us, because I generally... You know, towards the later stages of the game... I usually like to actually, you know, go in... And um, on that runway, because the view ranges are so small. Target down. The view ranges are, I notice, are smaller on this map. So I can actually get into a position on that runway when I know that there aren't many tanks that are going to be able to spot me. And I then have shots on both flanks. And I notice that you can, there are some definite opportunities for map control um, from that center runway. So we're going to have to work on getting those guys out of there. Our MX-10P is taking a lot of fire but they have our team has taken out one of the t62s this bmp coming down to play patent up there we have shots in the Patton. we'll take that no penetration that's fine we'll just wait for him to relight we got a lot of uh blind shots going in on him yeah that Patton just got completely wasted sitting out there mx10p is destroyed MP1, do we have shots on him? No, we don't. How about this T62? No. Alright. How's that M60? Is he still up? T62? Has I don't think I've been spotted yet. No, T62 has been spotted by someone else. How about the patent? Do we have shots over here? Nope. I'm gonna go help this patent out with the uh Actually, no, no shots over there. I'm gonna go help this Patton out with the T-62. BMP got spotted. Yeah, they're all behind the rock over there, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, help this Patton out. This T-62. I'm gonna go... Oh, he just got smacked. And dead, alright. 
seems to be a lot of pressure coming down on our flank up north, so... If I can not run into this tank here... That T-62 is still playing the middle there. Well, I have shots from here. No. On that guy? Yeah, we do have shots on him. Good solid hit. If our team won't finish him off, we'll take the kill. Never mind. He's down. Another T-62 up. And then the BMP is still down there spotting. I don't want to be I don't want to go where that T-62 is over there because he's basically completely locked down now. Patton is engaging the Leopard over there. I'm not sure how successful he's going to be, though. That Leo is on full health and should be able to solo both these get both of those guys. I would like to take this BMP out. Got him. Well, we were not in time to save the T-62. Now the Leopard is pushing on those guys, so we're going to go help them out. I'm on full health. I need to go take some hits for my team. Seems to be a lot of pressure going to be coming down on this flank. T-62 is pushing, but he's on low HP. I'm just worried about that Sheridan. I don't want to get capped for all of my HP. Yeah, see, that's what I don't... I wasn't... See, that shot wasn't fully aimed. You notice how, how awful it sailed? I don't know. I feel like... if It seems like if you don't really... If you don't, if you don't fully aim, and that's not, you know, that's not always a luxury that you have, I feel like it just... I don't know. The shell goes way wide. I really am not interested in trading with a Sheridan right now, though. Keep bouncing shots from the Leopard, but that Sheridan is going to whack me if I'm not... Alright, cool, he missed. Gonna hug this rock. It's basically me right now. Screwed over by RNG a little bit. How's our leopard friend doing? Tank. Leo's preoccupied. We'll, we'll hit a shot into him. We'll, we'll definitely trade with him because we can afford to spare the HP. Leopard is down. But unfortunately, I don't think I can take another shot from the shared. But he just fired, so we're going to see if we can sneak in a cheeky shot. Yes, we can. Leopard being an ass, because can't accept the fact that he got outplayed with a, by a higher HP vehicle. So we're going to ignore him for now. Alright, Sheridan seems like he's going to push that T-62, so let's go ahead and give him some help. And he's dead. Shit. This is getting, this is getting pretty close, so I really, uh, I really don't want to be too aggressive right now. Because there's a, there's that, there's actually a second T-62 that I have not actually seen yet. He might be AFK in the spawn, he might not. Someone's spamming the map. Identify target. Hostile tank. 
We hit him, but oh, okay, all right, all right. Let's get this guy. Come on, come on, come on. Got him. All right, good. Because if he wasn't gonna push, I was going to. Looks like the second T62 got spotted, but he's down. All right, nice. And this Patton wants to wants to cap. Um, yeah, that's actually probably the best idea if we can. Uh, Because it'll pressure that T62. So we can end that stalemate. So I'm going to go ahead and hop on the cap. Because those guys are on lower HP. That full health patent, I don't know what he's doing over there. But basically what's going to happen is we're on the cap right now. And that guy's going to have to come out somewhere. Oh, he's on low HP as well. So he's probably, you know, he's not really interested in that. We'll get some, get some extra uh, reputation points for this, I guess. But yeah, this is a this is a very leopard-friendly map. I feel like if you look at just look at all those long sight lines, and so really rapid, fast, long-range, accurate vehicles are going to be able to really, really excel here. Looks like the enemy T62 was taken out for a victory. That was good. Let's take a look at our after action report. 3,400 damage, not bad. Um, so yeah, 3,400 damage. We uh, we got we got another four kills, I guess, another four assists, and we did manage to spot two enemies by ourselves. Now, what I did notice, um, you know, is that you know in, in Watt, I was so used to playing the Leo as kind of like my own spotter. But what I notice is, is because the view range, if we can bring up the uh, the stat card, do it. Does it have view range on here? Yeah, vision is only 350 meters. Now that's okay. It is only a tier four vehicle. But the thing is, is you know, in 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 what, uh, I always you know I had always used my Leo kind of as my own scout. But here, you know, it doesn't have really have the view range to be able to performing in that role. And what that means is, you know, you, you, you can play it similar to how you did in the other game. You, you can play it similar to how you did in Watt, but you can't be as aggressive with your scouting because you have to get up much closer. And, you know, the Leo, again, as you guys are probably well aware, doesn't really like to be in close. It's very, it's much more comfortable uh, at longer ranges, preferably from concealed positions. And that's kind of what we did in this game. We and in the pat in the last game we had you know a little bit of a brawl with that other Leo, but luckily we were able to conserve our HP, so that allowed us to come out on top of the engagement. And so as you guys saw, a lot of the skills that I you know that you know a lot of the skills that I picked up in Watt do definitely apply here. So you know we'll just recap you know conserving your HP so you can make plays later. Um, trade you know only trading when you absolutely have to make the plays. Minimap awareness, obviously, you know, those pat that patent was was very likely to get wiped out by those two guys if I hadn't come in and give them some help. Um, and, you know, cap pressuring, getting on the cap to pressure enemies that aren't coming out, stuff like that. Um, it's always good, you know, to you want to try and get off as much damage as you can without taking while taking as little as you can in return. You know, it's it's a game. It's you know, it's back to what we learned in Watt. It's a game about HP. Whoever has the most HP, you know, whatever team has the HP at the end of the game is the team that wins. So, like, so if I were to, you know, my first impressions of you know the past couple days I've had of this game is it's, it is very much like Watt. It feels a little bit more clunky, I guess, than Watt. Just be. Um, it's almost like, you know, I mean, the tanks, I, I do have to say, it does feel much more like I'm driving a tank rather than driving a sports car around, which I think is how it should feel. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, it's got the Watt arcade mechanics, but minus, you know, but it's got a more realistic, I guess, tank driving model. So that might be something that's a little bit weird for newer players to begin with. Now, 
Remember, and if you look at all these other options, there's PvE, there's base, I'm not sure what that's going to be in the future. But there's a lot of things that aren't yet, you know, in the game yet. Um, but it's familiar enough to a World of Tanks veteran that you're going to be able to get into this game pretty easily, I think. You've got your dealers, which replace, obviously, it's again, replace your nation's tech tree. Um, the up, you know, the upgrades is very similar. You got all the different modules and all that stuff. And I just think, you know, and even the garage, even the garage itself just looks just as reminiscent of Watt, the entire interface. Um, and so, and I, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And I'm glad to have, you know, I'm glad to have a game like that. Um, you know, I, I felt that World of Tanks... It kind of really just wasn't doing it for me anymore. I, I didn't really have as much fun playing the game as I did. But I think that this game might be able to remedy that. Um, I think a lot of the mechanics that they're implementing, the artillery mechanic, the ATGM mechanic, I think they're great. I love the proven mechanic because it actually makes you have to play your vehicle before you can just free XP to it. Now there haven't been they haven't actually put gold into the game yet, so no one has any gold. Everybody is grind everybody in, in uh, early access is grinding as if they were all on standard accounts. Um, and there's only you know, there's only six tiers of vehicles, but you know what? It's only the first round of alpha of open alpha testing. And I'm excited to see more. And let me know if you guys want to see more armored warfare in the future, because I really, really would love to share my experience in this game with you. So anyway, guys, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.